So yeah, I'm there butt naked except for my socks on an exam table after the doctor was like right next to me as I undressed. And it just wasn't what I expected. If you find yourself sick in France, in need of medical attention, or just curious about what it's like going to the doctor in France, keep on watching to learn what to expect at doctor's appointments in France and how they might differ from what you're used to in the US. Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Diane, I'm an American who's lived in France since 2012 and here on this channel we talk about everyday French life and beyond. And in addition, I also blog over at weinfrance.com, it's a living abroad lifestyle blog and I'd love for you to check that out if the written word is more your thing. Let's get right into today's video all about differences you might encounter when going to the doctor in France. And my reference point is always how things are in the US since I'm American, but my intention with this video is to give you some insight into what things are like to help ease any surprises and just to let you know what to expect. Because what always surprises me the most about going to a doctor in France or any foreign country, it's just kind of the uneasiness, what catches me off guard and can add to the stress, to the frustration, the awkwardness, is just being unprepared. So to that end, I'm gonna to try to prepare you with a few little things that are different about going to the doctor in France. So here's my quick disclaimer. Of course, what follows here in this video, it's my personal experience and not every single doctor at every single place in France is going to have things as I describe them uh, in this video. It's, it's the way things are done, overall generally in my experience but there are always exceptions all right and it's also not a comprehensive list or this video would be five hours long so with that let's get into it with number one okay the price in france a visit to your general gp your general practitioner will run you currently 25 euros and that fee is standardized nationwide um, and you pay that doctor directly in person at the end of your visit. You don't get billed later and you could pay sometimes a uh, cash check or credit card, uh, but not all offices are equipped to take cards. So just make sure that you have another method of payment. If you have a French insurance card, the carte vitale, uh, it's a green card. You'll be able to uh, show that and then you'll be reimbursed about 70% through the Sécu and that's France's social security system. Uh, and then also you'll have supplementary insurance in most cases, that's called a mutuelle, and you'll be reimbursed even more. Now, if you're a tourist in France and you need to see a doctor, that's fine, just make an appointment and you'll pay that 25 euros, just like a French person, except you won't be reimbursed unless maybe you have a travel insurance, you know, because you're not living here paying into the system like a citizen or permanent resident would. Now, keep in mind specialists uh, do charge more beyond the 25 euros uh, that a GP would charge. And if they're non conventionné, they can charge even more. But still, the point I wanna make is that costs are clearly outlined ahead of time. You know, for me in the US, it was always a guessing game, trying to figure out what the doctor's visit would, would cost. And that was always the easy part. Then it was like, ah, is the insurance gonna cover it? Uh, do I just pay my copay at the end? Will I be billed? How much? And even for blood work in France at a lab, you can always ask what each test will cost up front and they'll be able to tell you that. Next up is the waiting room. So doctors' waiting rooms in France tend to be very simple with chairs lined up against the wall in a way that allows everyone in the room to see who's coming in and out of the room. And when you first get to this waiting room, always be sure to greet the other patients in the waiting room when you arrive. So don't just run in and try to take a chair in the corner without anyone seeing you. It's really important in France that you see people, that you acknowledge them. So even if you say a simple bonjour, make sure you say that uh, before you just sit down. Always, always acknowledge the people already in the room. Politeness is huge. And I made a whole video on why bonjour is a must. Now, when it's time for your appointment, uh, the doctor will personally come and get you out of the waiting room. They'll just call your name when it's your turn, normal. But something to note is that in my experience, GPs uh, pretty much work alone, aside from a secretary, especially in, in small practices or just when it's just them. So you won't be greeted by a nurse or you know, a medical assistant who will first invite you in to check your vitals, get your history before seeing the doctor. It's the doctor himself or herself that will normally come get you from the waiting room. So <laughs> here's a funny story. Be aware that French GPs don't generally wear white doctor's coats or a suit or, you know, with a stethoscope around their neck. Uh, they might just be in regular plain clothes, you know? And so don't do what I did at my first medical visit in France and be like, hi, wait, are you the doctor? You know, kind of unsure of who this casual man was in front of me calling my name with, um, you know, a polo shirt 
unbuttoned in his chest hair and a little cross necklace, you know, and just jeans. Uh, it was different for me. So I didn't realize that the doctor would be dressed down. And um, yeah, I learned my lesson. Now I know. But yeah, if someone comes and calls your name, uh, whatever you think a doctor should or shouldn't look like, just act accordingly and assume this person is the doctor. Okay, and just a quick note before we move on to number three, in my last video about the pros and cons of living in France as a foreigner, I mentioned a French brand that I loved um, while I was talking about making a list. It's Rodia, they make amazing notebooks. And I actually realized I have an extra one on my shelf and I would love to give it away to you. So if you'd like to win uh, a Rodia notebook, I'll put the picture up here. Just stick around to the end and I'll give you just some quick notes on how to, uh, how to enter that giveaway. So stick around. And I also have uh, things I love segment, my new segment where I tell you about, well, something that I love at the end. But uh, yeah, we're going to continue right on with number three here, my differences. This is a big one and it's no nurse is usually present during exams. And this is one that majorly caught me off guard the first time I saw a gynecologist in France. It was just the doctor and me alone in an exam room, which was different than what I was used to. And it, it just made me a little uneasy because if anything strange happened, um, it would be my word against the doctors, and that wasn't something that I was used to. Um, you know, I got really comfortable in the U.S. knowing there was always a third party in the room um, for more sensitive exams, so maybe a nurse or a medical assistant at the gynecologist's office, and that's for the doctor's protection and also the patient's. And I find that in the U.S., uh, an assistant of some sort, a third party, is often present for doctors who are the opposite sex of the patients. But in France, that's really not the case, and this always put me at ease in the U.S., just knowing there was someone else there for the, the protection of all involved, you know? In France, I've never encountered a third party present, um, and I wouldn't say it never happens here. Again, it's just my experience, but it's certainly not common in France. So be aware that it's most likely going to be you and the doctor. All right, next up is nudity. So sticking with the gynecologist for a moment and kind of adding to my unease is this next point. Um, let's just talk about how the exam's conducted. So I was majorly surprised when it was time for my you know, pelvic exam and the doctor didn't leave the room for me to undress. I mean, they weren't, they weren't gawking at me or anything. They were just doing paperwork at their desk, but you know, she didn't give me a gown either, a paper gown of, of any kind or a covering. Um, over my pelvic area to kind of drape over yourself, you know, during the exam. In the U.S., I was always given some type of gown or like a draping. It gets cold, right? So yeah, I'm there butt naked except for my socks on an exam table after the doctor was like right next to me as I undressed. And it just wasn't what I expected. And it made an awkward exam even less pleasant because I didn't know. And medical nudity in France is a thing that I find very different. Uh, so just be aware. And in addition to the gynecologist, when I first arrived in France, um, most of us are required to get a chest x-ray. And during that appointment, you know, I was kind of like paraded through the back area of the imaging center, completely topless, you know, like this, um, no gown or anything while they moved me from, you know, the intake room to the x-ray area. And there were, you know, doctors of both sexes um, in that back area. And, you know, they didn't even care, <laughs> you know, that I was there. I was just another person, but it was different than what I was used to. And I felt exposed. So just something to know so you know what to expect. And now, you know, I bring a sweater, some type of shawl that doesn't change the exam, doesn't hinder what the doctor's doing. And, you know, it's just something that makes me feel more comfortable to put around my shoulders. And you could easily do this if uh, you're easily cold or it would be off-putting to you to be completely nude and uncovered. And I want to be clear here that nudity in general, it's not a problem. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying or that what they do in France is wrong. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not a prude when it comes to nudity like that. I'm not embarrassed by my own nudity or anyone else's. So it's not that. And of course, doctors don't, you know, doctors need to see you without clothes to properly examine you uh, in these situations. But my issues are the following. One, as I've said several times, I just didn't know what to expect. I wasn't expecting to, you know, stripped down completely without a gown in the presence of the doctor to not be covered. So it just kind of caught me off guard. Uh, and two, I didn't realize it would be just me and the doctor, no nurse. So that's something to, to take into consideration. It can just, again, add another level of awkwardness. And then the last part, I think maybe this is what makes it so awkward. The doctor's in a position of power and control. They're the one examining you and the nudity 
feel like it creates even a greater power differential and it could be really awkward when you're there butt naked <laughs> with no sense of you know modesty granted um, and you feel even more vulnerable so that's it the nudity is not the issue it's just i didn't know what to expect and it caught me off guard caught me by surprise and Okay, next is sometimes you'll pick up your own vaccine or other prescription for a medical appointment yourself. It's not provided for you once you get to the medical center. So my advice here is to always read everything on your prescription because it might not be what you expect. And just to give you an example, I looked briefly at a prescription uh, for blood work from my ophthalmologist when seeing a new eye doctor and getting a full exam, and he just wanted some, some recent blood work. So I went and got the blood work, no big deal. Uh, brought that with me to my next exam, and then it was time to get uh, those eye drops in your eyes where they dilate your, your pupils and they look behind your eye. And he was like, okay, and where are your drops? And I said, I don't know, what, what drops? And he said, oh, you know, on your prescription, it was written, get, bring the drops, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I totally overlooked the part underneath that required me to go to the pharmacy ahead of time to get the special drops for myself uh, before that next appointment. And that's because in the US, whenever I would go to the ophthalmologist, they would just have the drops on hand. It wasn't my responsibility to pick them up. So I didn't even, I didn't even think to look at the prescription beyond the blood work and look at the two lines underneath. Um, it was just a simple thing I overlooked and I've learned my lesson. All right, next up is urgent care centers. And in the USA, it's quite common to see for-profit franchises, usually privately owned in strip malls or other shopping centers. I'll put one up on the screen here. And they're very, very common in the US. They usually have convenient hours. They have emergency medicine, physician staff, uh, and they're perfect for when you need to see a doctor for something urgent, but not an emergency, you know, or if you're in an area uh, far away from home and your GP isn't there, but it's not a full blown emergency. You know, they have x-ray machines and that sort of thing. Now in France, they don't have urgent care centers like this. To clarify, yes, France has emergency rooms. You can get care for urgent situations. Uh, and there are doctors who can see you, you know, in the emergency room or trauma center, you have an accident, you go to one of those, you will be seen, absolutely. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the really common urgent care centers, the walk-in centers that you could find in so many areas of the USA, cities and suburbs that provide that ambulatory care outside of a traditional hospital setting. Now for the things I love segment. It's my new segment where I share quite simply something I love. I've done the blogs I love, small businesses I supported over the holidays and that sort of thing. And today I just wanna focus on something shopping related. So I don't do a ton of shopping these days, but when I do, I try to buy from eco-friendly brands or buy secondhand or, you know, brands that focus on sustainability. And I made that switch a few years ago and have done pretty good 90, 95% of the time because I learned about the fashion industry and just the horrors of fast fashion. So I won't go into all of that, but two sites I love for secondhand, um, secondhand shopping is one in North America, Poshmark. They are an online marketplace uh, where you can buy and sell used clothing and accessories. I've used them for years, buying and selling. They're easy to shop, tons of brands, really great stuff, millions of sellers. And I have a code below, if you're new, uh, you get $10 off. Also, if you're in Europe, we have Vinted, and they operate in 12 global markets, majority of which are in Europe. They're kind of like, Vinted is the Poshmark of Europe. I have found that people in France overvalue their merchandise, like they buy something new for 80, wear it once, and then try to sell it for 70, so be aware. But on both sites, you can make an offer. All right, next up for my giveaway, just comment below to win the Rodia notebook that I'll put up on the screen. It's not a secret giveaway, so just say, I'd love to win the notebook somewhere in your comment, I'd love to win the notebook. And I'll pick a winner a week from today at noon France time, and you'll know you won because I will reply directly to your comment. So be sure to check back in a week to see if you won. It's open to my subscribers worldwide. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you today. Be sure to check out my line of merch, link below. It lets me keep my content here on YouTube free for you and allows me to rely less on sponsors. So I appreciate your support there. Also, be sure to grab my newsletter link below. It's free, I won't spam you, and you'll get a PDF of do's and don'ts to know all about when you visit France. And also, uh, yeah, hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you back here next time real soon on We in France. Salut!